Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Hymetric's Tech Bytes. Uh, I'm Derek Byrne, Senior Consultant here at Hymetric and over the next 10 minutes or so I'm going to be covering tag-based service mapping which is a new function that was added to the ServiceNow Orlando release. Now for this Tech Bytes I'm going to make two fairly large assumptions. Uh, the first one being that um, you already understand what discovery is within ServiceNow and that you have some understanding of the current top-down service mapping functionality that exists. Now if you don't, that's okay. Um, there's still value in you um, viewing the rest of this tech byte. But what I am going to do is put up some contact details at the end of the tech byte. So if you want to dive into uh, understanding discovery or the current um, top-down service mapping that's available, um, please do reach out to us and we can run a separate session for you on those particular subjects. So before I go into how tag-based service mapping actually works, I thought it might be a good idea just to explain what I mean by a tag. So if we look at the uh, AWS definition of what a tag actually is, uh, they say a tag is a simple label consisting of a customer-defined key and an optional value that can make it easier to manage, search for, and filter cloud resources. And although there's no inherent types of tags, um, they enable customers to categorize resources by purpose, owner, environment, or other criteria. So what does all that mean for us in the ServiceNow world? Well, the key here is cloud resources. Tag-based service mapping is purely for cloud resources. Um, if you're looking to map on-premise services, uh, then what you should really do is stick with the current top-down approach within ServiceNow uh, and leave tag purely for, for cloud. So why would we not just use top-down mapping for, for our cloud resources in the same way we do for on-premise? On the left you'll see a top-down map. It's a lot more detailed than the one on the right. I've even heard these called surgical um, in the past. Now for anyone who's ever done any service mapping using the top-down approach, you'll know that it takes an awful lot of time and effort to get it to the point of being useful. But once you've got it to this sort of view, you'll know the immense value that it adds to the organization. Now on the right we have a less detailed map, it's the tag-based map. It's a fairly flat structure, it's showing me some VM, some workload, nothing really more than that. But what we found is that for most clients that's enough. That's all they really need to give them immense amount of value in terms of mapping their cloud resources. But the most important thing about this and the reason that people are going to start using it is that it's really quick to create. So that's what we're going to focus on for the rest of this tech byte is how to actually create those maps. Now to save time I've already run a discovery of a cloud environment and as you can see on the screen here uh, that's returned a list of virtual machines in the cloud but it's also given me two other columns one being the tag keys and one being the tag values. Now for anyone who's worked with cloud in the past you'll know that one of the largest challenges you get is getting people to stick to a tagging convention as you can see here, I've got a couple of examples where someone's used the key of application and someone else has used app name and someone has used app. They're exactly the same thing, but they haven't stuck to a particular naming convention. So one of the first things I'm going to show you in the demo is how we get around that issue when we're using tags in service mapping. Now to do that, we use a new concept called tag categories. Now they're essentially just a way to group uh, all of the various tag keys that we've seen uh, into a single easy to use tag key. Now on screen uh, you can see an example of an application service uh, tag category there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through how to go create that uh, and talk you through all the various different options. So what we'll do here is we will click on new category and we'll go and call this application service helps if I spell that right there we go and here you'll see I've got a section here where I can add all of the various different tag keys that we found so if you remember from the discovery output we had uh, app and we had uh, application I think we also saw uh, app name Now you could also put some others in here that you haven't seen yet but you think that people may use when they're going and creating cloud resources. So in here I could then put uh, other variations, uh, apps, uh, and
and applications, just as examples. So essentially what's going to happen is every time we run a cloud discovery and it finds tags on cloud resources, if any of them fall into those groups there, it will group them all together and call them application service. Simple as that. Uh, so all I need to do then is click submit and that will then go through into system. Now the next thing we need to do is set up uh, what's known as a tag service family. Now essentially a family is really just a set of rules that help ServiceNow identify what they call service candidates. I'll talk about what a service candidate is in a second. But first of all, let's show you how to actually set up a family. Let's click over here. And you'll see I've got a previous example called application services. What I'm going to do for the demo here is actually show you how I set that up. So let's click on new. And we'll give this uh, family a name. So this is application services. That's what it was called. And you'll see here I can now add tag categories to this service family. Uh, to show you how to do that, and you'll see it gives me the list of tag categories I had from before. So the application service was the one that we built. And there's also some other there, some other examples there as well. But I'll pick that one first of all. But I'm also going to add something else, because what I want to do with this family is I want to use it so whenever we run discovery, it's going to look for tags that say what the um, the thing is in terms of is it an application you know is there a key there that says it's an application I'm also looking for the environment it sits in so is this production QA test whatever it might be so I'm going to use the other tag that was previously um, created outside of this demo called environment and that of course will have be looking for tags like environment enviro environments or any other variation on that so that's our family set up of course we could add more if we wanted to. It's going to click on submit and have that uh, go create that for us. So to summarize where we are now, we have created our tag categories. It's a one-off thing that we need to do. We've created some service families. Again, that's a one-off task that we need to do. And the next thing we're going to look at is the actual services themselves and how we identify that thing I mentioned which was a service candidate. So let's go look at that now. And what we'll do is we'll use the application services family that we created. And you'll see the uh, the first section there is showing us the, the composition of the family. So you remember we added two tag categories, one being application service and one being environment. And then what it will do is it will use those rules to look at the discovered data it's found out there and it will highlight any candidates it thinks might be services based on the data we've put in. And you'll see straight away it's found uh, a couple of candidates that are not services at the moment, but potentially could be. So just to break down what we're seeing on the screen here, if you look at the first one there, you'll see that it found an application, or a tag that was, was classed as an application, um, and it called it invoice validation. And it also had an environment tag against it, which was called prod. So that's a good assumption here that there is an invoice validation service that's in production. And then below you'll see that it found a category of rewards um, and dev. So maybe the reward service that's in dev. So you get the idea. And that's why I say you could add as many different tag categories to this as you want to. So you can be as granular as you want to in terms of the services you're looking for. Now if we look at these and we think that these are a good candidate and we want to go create a map off them, it's as simple as putting a tick in the box and saying map selected. That's all we need to do. Now let me show you the results of that with some that we made earlier on. So I'm just going to close that down. And if we come down here, uh, I'm just going to use one of the map services we've already got. So rewards dev. And if I view that map. So now we have our map. And at the top there you can see the uh, application service itself. So uh, we looked at rewards and that's in the dev environment. Uh, underneath that you see a layer of workloads. So for instance here I've got some Postgres installed there. I've got instance of Tomcat and by the looks of it here this is an LDAP configuration. Uh, they sit on these servers here. So one's on this Linux server, one's on that Windows server and the Postgres is sitting on this Linux server and there we have our service map. So to summarize, let's just review the steps uh, required to get tag-based service mapping working. 
First of all, we just need to do a discovery of your cloud environments to find the various tags that you have. We need to go create the tag categories so that we remove any issues with people not following conventions. We need to create the tag service families so that we can start to set up some rules to tell ServiceNow what to look for for service candidates. We'll review the service candidates once they're created. And then finally, we'll choose the service candidates we're interested in and we'll view the service maps. And finally, I just want to say thank you for uh, joining us on this latest edition of the Tech Bytes. Uh, you'll see there there's some contact details, so if you just want to have a look at some details about who we are as a business at Highmetric, uh, or you can email us to get some more information about the Tech Byte series or any of the details we talked about today. And of course, you can see all of the other Tech Bytes episodes on the YouTube channel, and you can look us up on LinkedIn as well. So with that, I just want to say thank you for attending, and we'll see you on the next edition of Tech Bytes.